St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first are the Cotula family in memory of a very special mother, and it's from her girls. The second, an anonymous donor from Trenton, Ontario, for the deceased members of their family, for an ease in the suffering of his wife, Carmel, and for peace in the world. And the third are the members of the Knights of Columbus, Council 5420 of Goderich, Ontario, for their sick and deceased members. And the members of the Cotula family are with us here today. We thank all of you for the gift of this telecast. And so we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We acknowledge the gifts that we have received from God, but also the lack of gratitude that we have shown so often. And so we ask forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who give constant increase to your church by new offspring, grant that your servants may hold fast in their lives to the sacrament they have received in faith, and we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you According to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, 
and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God has sown with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that both see and hear. The word of the Lord. Keep me safe, O oh God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O oh God, you are my hope. Protect me, O oh God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you my Lord, I have no good apart from you. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. Keep me safe, O oh God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord So my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Keep me safe, O oh God, you are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices, my body also rests secure, for you do not give me up to shame, or let your faithful ones see the pit. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. After Mary Magdalene and the other Mary had heard the message of the angel that Jesus had been raised from the dead, 
They left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, where they will see me. And while the women were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. And after the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told to this day among the Jews. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. I think the the readings today present us with people who are fearless. The first one is Peter. And we know from the incredible dramatic change that has occurred in the man who three times denied Jesus, who didn't understand the mission of Jesus and wouldn't let him wash his feet, is now very boldly proclaiming the victory of Christ. Obviously, the Pentecost event And the power of the Holy Spirit was the culmination of a conversion process that have left them now both bold and enlightened. As Jesus himself did, Peter, the first Christian preacher, challenges human self-sufficiency with a proclamation of both the need of God's grace and the possibility of receiving it. Raymond Brown points out that Peter makes the proclamation in what we would call Old Testament terms, thus affirming the basic consistency of what God has done in Jesus Christ and what the God of Israel did for the people of the covenant. Many centuries after God called the Hebrew slaves and made them the people of Israel, there are similarities in their experiences and the experience of Christians in the centuries after the resurrection of Jesus. Both they and we have had to have a vision of faith to see at times God's realities in and through a history when it may have seemed that God was absent. Brown maintains that the New Testament alone covers too short a period of time and is too filled with success to give Christians the lessons the Old Testament gives us. In the Acts of the Apostles, Peter turns from the scriptures to tell us what God has done in Jesus. A brief summary of his mighty works, the crucifixion, the resurrection, culminating in scriptural evidence that he was the Lord and the Messiah. Jesus spoke about the reign of God and its challenge and its challenge to accepted values of its time. But the preaching was not focused on him. It does now become the central point of the preaching of any Christian. It was almost as if they, and today, we couldn't announce the reign of God or the kingdom of God without first telling the account about Jesus, in whom the reign of God was made present. The gospel that was preached became centered on the identity of Jesus as both Messiah and the Son of God. And that's the emphasis we give it today. It certainly was the focal point for both Magdalene and the other Mary who came to the tomb. The women had seen the crucifixion, had watched the burial, and then they stayed contemplating the tomb. After the Sabbath, they returned and continued their vigil at the grave. How hard it is for us to let go of ones that are so dearly loved, and we want to stay close to that particular place. Gutierrez points out that the death of the Lord had confused the disciples and made them withdraw. But the women, the women were not intimidated. The angels invite the women to see the place where he lay, but then he directs the women away from seeking Jesus the crucified so that they can experience him as Jesus, the risen Christ. They're not to stay in the place of death. And with great fear and great joy, they leave. But foremost is the shift from a paralyzing fear to an overpowering joy. 
The fear that the women experience doesn't paralyze them as it did the guards, as the text tells us, who became like dead men. Those women were the very first evangelizers. They were the very first missionaries who announced the resurrection of the dead. Magdalene and Mary meet Jesus on the way, and he greets them with the word of the resurrection, peace, greetings. It's no chance meeting, but rather the risen one's personal affirmation of the angel's message. He's not a ghost, as the women take hold of his feet that yesterday were nailed to the cross and today carry him to the encounter with the women we hear about. Megan McKenna and Verna Holyhead have given me some wonderful insights into this particular text. It's no longer, when I read it, I realize that the message of Jesus is a little different than the message given by the angel to the women. What we hear there is my disciples. When Jesus speaks, for the very first time, what we hear is my brothers, and obviously inclusively, my sisters. Those words, those two words, reveal the world after the resurrection, a world of forgiveness, a world of mercy, of new life and freedom. Freedom from sin, freedom from betrayal, from death into hope and newness of possibility into the future. In obeying the word of God, we always meet the presence of God coming toward us. And we too are gifted with both peace and forgiveness. As disciples, as brothers and sisters, we must live the moment of the resurrection and make sure that all that we meet, the people that we meet, know the extents and power of that peace and reconciliation that we have been given and gifted by our God. Yes, our faith in the resurrection is built on the word of God and on the presence and the witness of the risen Christ in our human experience. In men and women like ourselves who have, been, who have received the gift of faith, and in turn are called to witness to being alive to God in Christ Jesus. Barbara Reed eloquently reminds us, yes, that we will fall. We will be called back to Galilee again and again, called to leave the place of the dead and follow Jesus who offers us a new life that will continue to transform us into the image of the crucified and the risen one. And for all of this, we loudly and we constantly sing Alleluia. Because Easter is not only what happened to Jesus, but to a great degree, it's about what happens to us when we live lives that are transformed by his resurrection. Please join me as we pray together. This day we lift up in prayer the many thousands of people who join us via television. Many of them have written in and expressed the intentions they want us to remember. And so for all of them and for their specific intentions, we pray to the Lord. In a very special way, we pray for each one of us, those of us here present and those who join us via television, that the spirit of the risen Christ will glow in our hearts, will fortify us and give us the peace that we so long desire. And for that grace for each and every one of us, we pray to the Lord. We pray in a very special way for those people who are affected by violence, by war, and in a very special way for the refugees in Syria and those who find themselves in the neighboring countries, that justice will be done for them. And for this grace, we pray to the Lord. And all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Thank you. 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And accept graciously, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your peoples, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, on this time, above all, to lodge you more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world, and by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen. Have a good day. Our thanks to three donors. The first are the Cotula family. The second are anonymous donors from Trenton, Ontario. And the third are the members of the Knights of Columbus, Council 5420 in Godrich, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. <laughs>